So I haven't done anything. Actually, one other thing I'm going to say, I love this stamp set, you know, simple masking, a scrap piece of card. Mm -hmm. Let's move my ink out of the way. I don't even need to think about masking. You know, I can go straight over the top. It's brilliant. Of course. I thought that was going to be the background of what I wanted to do. And it just gives me leveling points. I, I have to do that. I have to work out um, where my focal points are going to be. So one is going to be there and one is going to be there. Otherwise, my head just goes funny, if that makes sense. <laughs> I adore that. Well, as soon as you showed me this journal yesterday when we were talking about the show, I'm blown away that that one stamp set can do so much and have such an impact. I've actually only from that used one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And there's a lot more on there. So I could have, you know, gone a lot lot further with them um, and everything like that. I mean, there's just loads you can do with it. It's quite a brilliant set. But I'm going to tip out all the goodies I've made so far, but I've got some other bits to do. Now, when I do a journal page, I have to, like I said, think of my focal point. So I have die cut um, the hot air balloon and I'm going to do simple layering with mine. So that's going to be that simple layering. And I've done the back plate. Now I want to, what I want to do with the back plate is I actually want to stamp on it. And because you've given us the back plate, I don't have to worry about masking anything off. No. I can add this now to there. Perfect. And it looks like I've done masking once I've actually stamped on everything. And then I want to use the globe. So I've cut the globe out as well. And the globe's going to go down here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I chose some of the stamps that you've got, like the New York, the locations and everything like that. Yeah. And again, I just cut it again, but just so the circle, I've been a bit tight with the card, so I can just <laughs> get that circle there. And then I will layer it up, you know, with that other part there. So they're going to be like my two focal points on the actual page. Fantastic. Um, I want people to realise art journaling doesn't have to be about medias. Do you know what I mean? It can use your die cuts, use your stamps. Absolutely. Yeah. I always thought of it as being getting messy and things like that all the time. But it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's really journaling is about embracing you, I think, personally. Yes. And then what I did was I took one of your backing papers and I started cutting it all up. <laughs> because even those, those are... Um, not in traditional shapes. Once you start decoupaging things up on top of others, they take on another new look altogether. Yes. So, and so I, I mean, and then, oh, you know, like I said to you, I had loads of fun. And then I've stamped out lots more of the stamps and cut them out. And because they're really rectangle or very simple oval shapes, you can actually create, a, you know, all the elements you need really, really quickly. So I'll make a start, otherwise I'm gonna be waffling for hours, aren't I? No, 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 you carry on. Actually, that globe, while I didn't mention, I did say to everybody, um, remind me of the stamp um, when it comes to the globe. So the world map stamp, I know you don't have it there, Lou. Um, in yeah. fact, I'm just very, very quickly going to switch back just to show everybody what I mean. This world map stamp here that I love, on that globe circle that you've cut, you could stamp a portion of this depending on where you want to represent on the globe. So it's sized nicely. So if you want to have uh, England in the center there, you can do that. If you want to focus on, I don't know, Africa on your globe, you can stamp that bit onto that uh, insert for it. So sorry, Lou, back to you. <laughs> Fine, go for it. Um, right, so uh, this is the outside of a hot air balloon. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to take the postcard stamp and I wanted to use and decorate the back of it because I've got already um, my backing done. Mm -hmm. it, it just coordinates. Well, well, what I'm trying to say, I want this to coordinate with my backing. So if I start using the same stamps as I did before, then it just, you know, it just does that. Yeah. Um, well, that was the plan in my head. But then I think with journaling, <laughs> Go with what you love. Um, go with the designs you like. If you like to do things circular, do it circular. If you like to do it rectangular, do it rectangular. It doesn't have to be. It's your page. You know, yeah, make it absolutely. part of you. That's Nine, it. Sorry. A lot of the time, you're the only one that's going to see your journal, is aren't you? Yeah. Unless you yeah. want to share it, of course. But So I've just got, and I'm using a grey ink pad, so I've just got it very faintly there. And then what I want to do, I want to bring in a few bits of colour with the smaller elements. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going for perfect stamping. 
um it's not i don't want it to be my focal point but i want it to have i want people to notice it's there but i don't want it to be the thing that says like hello jazz hands i'm at the party sort of scenario <laughs> <laughs> so is that what you do when you go to a party <laughs> well, jazz hands. no i leave that to my youngest son um <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he, yeah. So I just want to add in some of the the different postcard, and these are all and the detail. I'm going to see if I can lift it up. The detail in that little stamp where you can see his face. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's so cool. There's a lot Sorry. of detail, and I love that you're doing it with different colours as well because it really looks like true stamps. Then doesn't it? It does, and I, I wanted it to look um, as if. Now I could have taken one of the backing papers, yes, and die cut this out from one of the backing papers. But I just want it to look as if I've taken a vintage postcard and I've um, die cut into it. So that, that's the, that's what I'm thinking of in, in my head. Okay. <laughs> Gorgeous. Really that's what I'm thinking of. Um, so, um, while sorry, you're doing on. that, are you okay if I read out a few uh, yeah, of no, the comments? Um, so, Vereen, where are, where are you? There you are. Um, she said she's been wanting a hot air balloon dye that's not too cutesy, and this is perfect. I love that. I'm so glad you think so. Um, Michaela Hearn has said, uh, I have a nice collection of hot air balloon dyes and stamps, and you need to add these to it, and the world, world map stamp is amazing too. Um, mm. Do you know what? You must be explaining things absolutely perfectly because we don't that i can see have any comments um emma blake said hi to lou and lou and she loves what you're doing oh hi em um <laughs> yeah thank you for joining us um joan has said this whole collection is so versatile it can be used for many things and she can see it being used for many masculine cards but she'd also use it for vintage looks do you know what? i think i i love making masculine cards and i think that's where i was going with this when i was designing it I think anything that makes masculine cards a little bit easier has got to be a win, hasn't it? Oh, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and I think I think what makes masculine cards also hard is we put so much pressure on ourselves. Yes. Um, you know, we think they've got to be um, X, Y, and Z sort of thing. Yeah. And they don't. Right, I'm using one of the postcard stamps, and this is going to be the world, and I've turned it upside down as well, because you don't have to use them the straight way. If, if people are unsure, if they look at your backing papers, like the one I'm going to use in a minute with the tickets mm -hmm. and things like that, you've got that all layered up and you've hidden things in that backing paper. <laughs> but, um, you know, take inspiration from that. And it's still everything that you want to see still stands out. Mm, absolutely. Um, um, Karina has said that that almost looks like a passport with the stamps there. I think it does. Yeah. Oh, that's going back years, isn't it, when they used to stamp your passport? Oh, no, I know, I missed that. Vividly. You've actually well, got a couple of those sort of stamps in there as well, haven't you? Um, yeah. I think you've got a New yeah. York one. One of the stamps in there that I haven't had time to play with, I had, I've got a good, well, I've got a scrap piece of card, I should got to show you quickly, sorry. Um, <laughs> this, you, <laughs> this is one of the wavy lines you've got in that postcard set. And I started to do it around the edge of my journal page, and I suddenly realised that if I turn this around, continuous can, yeah but also i can now start making myself a box to journal in oh yeah of course so i could carry on building that up or stamp one of your sentiments in lovely perfect so so many different ways of you this is why we have guests very talented guests come in and demonstrate our own um, products as well because you get different ideas that i wouldn't have thought of Right, so I'm just going to edge the, the little bit of that for the globe there. And I'm just going to, oh, that's one of my stamps there. Just do the same. You're not going to really see it, um, but just in case you, it just takes that white edge away as such. Mm -hmm. So they're my two pieces, and that is literally all I'm going to do with them to create them. So if I grab my journal again. Um, Kate, you while you're doing that, sorry, Kate has just said, Kate Baker has said, would the hot air balloon work for new baby? I think absolutely. You can use your pastel colours or your creams. Um, you don't have to add the vintage backgrounds, of course. You could add little stars or polka dots and stripes and things. Um, but yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm going to show you in the next demonstration two different ways of giving different looks to the balloon. So hold fire for that. Just that one there and you know adding that one Lovely. there you're talking about babies it suddenly becomes not a hot air balloon but a normal balloon 
Yeah, and if perfect. you tie the ribbon bow and a string coming down, it takes the vibe away again. Absolutely. I you also did. noticed with that shape, if you turn it upside down, it's a bit like a macrame net for a uh, like a vase of flowers. So you could put sort of foliage coming down out of it. I also thought of it as um, a light bulb moment. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have many of them. Right, well, so I don't have the moments. I love my but, living room. I've actually got vintage light bulbs in. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, I love them. No, I'll they, be decorating. So they, that's so that yeah. was just the base plate. So saving me from having to mask off all these different areas mm -hmm. that I've done, just by stamping that on there and then sticking it down onto my journal page. Perfect. It looks like it's part. It's become part of the background without. Um, do you know what I mean? Without. I'm all for easy. Oh, if absolutely. I, if I'm doing a journal page and it's a journal page for me and I have an idea, um, I want the, I want to be able to do the idea before my head goes on to the next idea. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm um, awful for remembering things. I have to do it when I think of it now. Yeah. So then we've got, so that's going to go on there. And then when I put the black layer on top, it brings in the black stamping. Perfect. Now it's coming off my page, but I could snip all that down or I could leave it out it doesn't matter um it's my page but what I did want to do was I didn't want to lose the basket so what I thought would be nice if, if I could either put the basket mat and layer it onto one of the stamped images lovely I saw all or you know one of the backing papers cut out and then suddenly I can see the basket and it becomes part of the um doesn't she doesn't blend in it's, there it's in so the I foreground then isn't it yeah. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. You know when something just goes? Yeah, usually was, tip of my tongue and it's gone. And I was just sitting there thinking, you know, it's a very straightforward word. Why can't you remember it? <laughs> well, it could have been the focus or the foreground. Yeah, mm -hmm. either way. Yeah. So I just want to do that there. Now, those little bits, I will keep why I'm doing this project. I'm going to be honest, after the project, if I don't use it, I would get rid of it. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't. But during a project, it's amazing how little bits like that suddenly fill a gap. You never know, do you? I'm just grabbing a cloth so I can take off some. And all I want to do is just very lightly put this top layer on. I love the thinness, how much... You've got all that detail, but it's it, it's it's delicate but looks robust. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yes. So um, this was quite a complex die to create because... I I sat in bed one Sunday morning. <laughs> Here's a vision for everybody. <laughs> Sunday morning, I had my cup of tea and my breakfast, my toast in bed, and I was designing these on obviously a computer. And it took yeah. so long to get the, the layering of like the, the net around the yeah. balloon perfect with the correct, correct sizing. Um, it took so, so long, but it's so worth it. But that top layer, I love that you could just use that on its own. If you need a very yeah. quick, simple card, it's yeah. so detailed, but as it comes out the die, like you say, it is robust. It doesn't, I've never had one tear or anything on me as I've tried to take it out, despite how fine and delicate it is. But I also thought with the different layers, if, I mean, if you cut each layer out and then suck them onto acetate, mm -hmm. layer, and then filled each layer as a shaker pocket, you've got like a multi-layered shaker. Yes, and I have given you, uh, like you say, that back plate, the solid one, yeah allows yeah. you to create shakers and apertures and yeah. things like that. I do like a shaker card when I get oh. the chance. I love them, but they're not great for TV, are they? No, they're not, no, Sadly. no. I think because um, the presenters decide, you know, that they're going to treat the shaker card as a part of their workout routine. Yeah, yeah. Um, up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> sort of thing. And you just look at it and go, oh, I hope that's going to last in the next hour. Yeah. Right, so that's just my two focal points on the journal page I'll just push it up a little bit so while I was working on it and I just wanted to um so, so people like you say you can bring your die cuts in you know you can make them part of what you wanted to do so taking the sheet here so I use this backing paper and you have got so much here and if if you were doing your journaling and you didn't know what color inks or anything to do there I mean you've got lots here you've got yellows blues browns blacks reds and that was my starting point. And you've got lots that you can snip away. Look at the words. I mean, I love some of these, you know, like cold drink, plane ticket, reservation. You know, I could go <laughs> on and on. But what I wanted to do next was I just wanted to start layering up. And I've just cut out little elements. So now, if 
you didn't want to colour all of these in, um, you know, like getting your pens out. Yeah. Suddenly, by cutting out little elements from the papers, you're bringing in um, your colour that way. You're getting and little pops of colour, aren't you? You are, totally. And then I'm just going to put that there. And doesn't matter, if, you know, one thing that's taken me ages with, I can do collage, and I love collage, and I can layer it all up. Yep. But you know, when you do backgrounds, I'm so reluctant to cover a background if oh, I'm really happy with I it. I was just thinking that while you were positioning that, and I was just thinking, I think I had the same thing as you. Oh, I don't yeah. want to cover that up. But actually, do you know what? It's only stamping on paper. It it's is. not. And it took me oh, ages to go, do you know what? Like you say. So I'm just going to trim down some of these bits because you've got, it doesn't have to be whole images, it can be part images. It can be bits and pieces. So I just want to add the, and if I go over the pages, I'm not worried because I can trim around the edge of my pages with a craft knife. Yeah. At the end, once everything's dry. So I'm just going to add that on there. But what I do want to do is I do want to take one of the stamps that I have stamped out and just put it there to make it look like it's got a stamp on the postcard. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so, so this is a build build a postcard. So we've given you a basic postcard main stamp, yeah. but you can layer up your other like you say coloured stamps over the top um, I've put that there and like you say I've got oh I love this one I just love the, the script in it I just just thought it was and it doesn't matter if you put things upside down back to front no of course not no where, it's wherever you want to put them I'm going to put it here um, because if you're unsure like you say look at look at the backing papers that you've created and some things are facing some way some things are facing another way um, and it just gives you a little bit of bravery. So I've got that there. And then there was some other little bits that I was finding, like I cut silly things like that, the ball, you know, and, and I found that little bit, just a tiny little, and I just want to add, you know, to where the hot air balloon is along there. Perfect. I've got, these are from the stamp set. So I've just stamped onto card. I love it, this. I like that one. It's got vintage stamps. Um, so um uh, just reading some comments um do, 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 where am i going to go kathy saltmarsh says she loves when a die gives you the background or the outline die for shakers or layering yeah that's the idea i mean yeah. as a crafter when i'm designing i know what i would like from the set um judith has asked me hang on, hmm. i think it's me she said what gave you the inspiration lou for these ah i'm assuming that's me in the collection could be Lou and her journal page. <laughs> um, but I'll answer, so I have vintage cameras in my craft room because I just, I don't know what it is. I've always loved scrapbooking and I've always loved documenting and taking photos. So I have a lot of vintage cameras laying around that aren't usable anymore. I've got also got an old typewriter, but I've already done a typewriter in the textures collections. So um, I started with the camera and that led me down to the travel collection. Then I thought, right, what other, elements or images will go with a, a travel and a camera and things like that and that's where it came because i love the look of old cameras i don't know about you lou um an yeah. old camera an old just tactile. yeah they really are they're just like the old yeah. ones used to have like a faux leather cut like um uh what's the word surface on some of them and things like that. we don't have that anymore do we they're just plastic no, we don't. Um, and also, I mean, like you'd say, that everything always came with a case. You never bought the case. Do you know what I mean? Afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's all of that, like you say, tactile bits. So now I've just got, I'm going to cut trim that down there. And all I'm doing is, I'm just, so I've just taken one paper and a few stamped images and just building up. And I just wanted people to, you know, in, have a go with journaling, but don't actually need think that you always need to get your mediums out. No, I love you, this. Um, so just build up as you want to build up so now i'm going to be honest i could carry on and keep you here doing this but, I can do this. but what i would do next is um i would carry on building this up um i, I mean as you can see i've got loads of bits left over from just that page because oh look i've got monday tuesday wednesday that can, <laughs> <I> can <see laughs> um, you can carry on building it trim the edges but then what i would bring in is you the sentiment stamps you've got Yes. So when you've got things like this, you, I mean, if I was making this a page about me, one of the things I would do is I probably wouldn't stick all of this down. And if I stamped the postcard, I could have tucked it underneath. 
and oh. that would have created a pocket. Lovely. So that could bring in, if you, if you didn't want to use the stamp, you could bring in your own postcards. Yep. Uh, and, you know, and you can make it like a scrapbook journal. But if you just wanted to make it, um, you could add, I've left enough space that I could add um, a picture of anywhere we've traveled. Mm -hmm. But you've got some wonderful sentiments, you know, and so the adventure begins. Every journey begins with a single step. You know, so yeah. these could easily be stamped out directly onto the page. My top tip if you're going to stamp on a journal is, it, my journal obviously works, it's stamping here, it's low, you know, it will dip down. Yeah. If you get your stamp platform and put it, open it up and just put it underneath, you've given yourself a flat surface. Lovely. To stamp onto. Yeah. And then if I was going to do, I mean, you could still use the lid if you really wanted to as well, um, but you've got somewhere flat and safe to stamp onto and you could add then all the sentiments you actually wanted to to do right. with it so as i said i would carry you know i'd carry on because you're like you've got loads of words tours travel i've got all the other colors <laughs> and gradually build this up but the idea of the page is just to show people you know use your die cuts in your art journals use Absolutely. this and this is mixed media people think mixed media needs to have a, a medium in it and it doesn't it's mixing things that you wouldn't normally put together. Oh, absolutely. I love it. I absolutely love how this journal's come together. And I'd love to sit and watch you finish it completely. Um, but I suppose I better get something done as well. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, you'd have lost me for the hour if I finished it. It would have you. been wonderful, though. But no, thank you so much for showing us that. So there's your journaling. Um, I'm going to come back and leave you to just have a breather and yeah. reset for another demo in a little while when I've shown people these. Thank you so much, Lou. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so um, I'm going to show you now um, that I'm actually going back to that hot air balloon just briefly because everyone's loving that and I want to show you two different ways of using it and the versatility of it. Okay. Before I do that, I just need to remind you very quickly all the offers we've got on today, but the main one being that if you are spending, in fact, let me put the details up for you. If you're spending over £20, you're going to get that free postcard stamp set. Build a postcard. That's what Lou was using for her background and then cutting elements out of it as well and building up underneath the hot air balloon there. There's a lot there um, in that stamp set and that is going to be yours free when you're spending over £20. That will come in at checkout so you don't need to add it to your basket. Um, we've also got lots of other bundles and things and these main die sets, the hot air balloon, the camera um, and of course, what's the other one? The globe. They are all from only 13.99 absolutely amazing prices so I'm going to bring you down to my desk now so I can just do a little bit of crafting. Um, so I've got the hot air balloons and I've cut these out already. They cut absolutely beautifully. I'm also going to just bring in, in a moment, my mat to keep my everything clean and tidy. Um, but what I've done, I want to show you how you can layer these up. You don't have to use them all um, lots and lots of different layers. You don't have to make them grungy. And somebody was saying about maybe a new baby card. So if you were to just use, look, white, yellow, and blue, I will glue these in a moment. Um, I've got some sticky paper on the back. I don't know if you've seen it. I know Sizzix do it. Uh, lots of other brands do it where you apply it to your cardstock before you die cut. With something intricate like this, it's absolutely ideal for putting some sticky on the back of your die cut. But look at that, just very, very simple, very clean. You can see there, hopefully, how you can add dimension to something like a new baby card, okay? You can then take that away. You could use it as, as Lou said, a shaker because you've then got that see-through. Or if you want to start adding color in, I've just die cut there from one of the papers. And that was actually one of the papers that Lou was talking about with all the tickets. Let's put the glue on the right one, shall we? So I'm just going to glue this very quickly for you. So each of the layering parts is for the main balloon bit itself. Okay, then the detail has got the basket part on it. So I'm just going to add glue around the edge. I've not used my sticky, sticky back paper on this one because this is really quite a bold die cut. We've actually got even larger as well, which I'll show you in the black in a moment and you can see that layers perfectly over there. Now even just that on its own is lovely, isn't it? But then when you add in the blue, let's just take this off. So that's why I've now got all the glue on the back. When you layer this over, you can see right through this. So this is for anyone who's not seen layering dies before perhaps. 
you can see I've just got a couple of little bits there that I can take out so that is very simple like I say that would work for a new baby especially on that cloud paper there like that and that's just three of the layers you can use one two three or all four of the layers but let's have another look at a completely different way of using these dies so I've now got the solid background then I've got the next one which as you can see is really quite chunky compared to the one that we were just putting on this balloon I'm going to layer that directly over the top then the next layer so this is the effect when you put all four together which is initially how I designed them so just trying to get my backing sheet off because of course when you're trying to do it live nothing wants to come away properly there we go just get my fingers under there should have used my pokey tool really so I'm going to pop this one on the top now I'm doing this black on black so you're not going to see this I, I appreciate that's going to be really hard for you to see at the moment but trust me in a moment when I add the finishing touch you're going to see this absolutely beautifully so I've just taken that um, backing sheet off again so it's nice and sticky for me and I'm going to add this detail over the top now to as you said the naked eye to the naked eye this looks absolutely fantastic with the detail I'll hold this up for you quickly just to show you I don't know if you'll be able to see until I do the next stage there we go can you see that in the light all of that detail in there the strings of the balloon but let's see let's bring in my gilding polish um, oh by the way these gilding polishes uh, today are on offer uh, they're only, I think they're $5.99 and they're only $9.99 when you're buying two of them. Well worth stocking up, even if it's just gold and silver. So I'm just going to brush over here now with my gilding polish. This is just absolutely beautiful on the black. It's really picking out the detail of those higher elements, leaving the dark, leaving the ones down the bottom here darker. Let's get a little bit on there there we go can you see the detail in there now isn't that just gorgeous it looks like old metal and you can go in of course and you can really highlight areas more if you use your finger rather than a sponge you get more of a, a stronger effect because you're not spreading it as much so I like to usually go in with the sponge first to get the deeper layers and then I go in with my finger on the very very top and just pull in or highlight those upper layers there so that is just two different ways of doing that balloon for very very different looks now imagine if you did pinks purples pastels you could make this balloon very girly you could pop your flowers around it when you do it dark with the metallics the gilding polishes and things you can put it on that vintage background this is one of the papers look from the paper pack doesn't that just look absolutely gorgeous? I'm in love with this dye. I think I'm going to be using it so, so much. So uh, that's that. Don't forget gilding waxes. These ones with the sponge applicator in the top, they're two for $9.99 at the moment over on Craft Stash, which is an amazing deal. I just spotted that this morning. Um, so that's another way of using the hot air balloons. Now, I think we're going to move on from the hot air balloons. Um, Lou, are you just about ready for us? Oh. And she, adding some more. she had it already and then she, yeah. you're such a craft you're, you're a true crafter it's like you've got two minutes so you'll just start playing again <laughs> what I did um but I'll put that way but then it was just to you know I just thought I had to but you know you can be brave enough and if I cut now start cutting away the excess bits that are going over the edge it it doesn't look you know it looks suddenly it becomes part of the page and everything like that yeah so yeah I will carry on building that. Sorry. Gorgeous. No, I love it. Hopefully we can get some photos from you afterwards anyway so we can see all that detail that you've added. Yes, I will, I'll do all of that. Um, right, so I thought... Let's move my scissors before I stab myself. I thought this time I'm going to use the um, alphabet um, that you've got on. I love the shape of this. I love free alphabet. Um, not free as in, in like don't cost anything but um free and easy that you can put the words where you want to put them put the yep. letters so i could ink all of that and just put that straight onto a backing paper mm -hmm. or you you know you can create them however you want to do them 
So what I want to do is I want to create some different um, words on there. And I'm going to use, oh, instead, I'm trying to think what colours I was going to use. I had planned it out in my head. Right, <laughs> so I'm going to go, and I'm, I'm going to line these up with an ish. Do you know what I mean? If they're not 100% straight, Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm not going to lose sleep, if that makes sense. Yeah, these have a slightly distressed edge to them, which actually gives you the freedom to be a little looser, freer. I don't, can't think of the right word, but yeah, a little more relaxed with them. Yeah, and I just want to put them near-ish each other. I know it's hard on my background, but once I start stamping, so I've just used them and I've got you, me. But I mean, I could have changed that and put the stamp down there. You know, this, that's what I like about them, when you can create them how you want. Mm. And I've just taken one of the button papers that you've got, and I just want to, and I'm going to use Distress Ink, and I'm using Pumice Stone, but I am not, um, I'm not going to be precise about my stamping. Right. Um, so if I can't see anything, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lose sleep, if that makes sense. No. Um, so I've got that there, and I'm just going to take up the excess ink. So I've got you, and I've got the me. And if some of the letters come out, that's a bonus. If some don't, it's, it's yeah, you know. Yeah. I think sometimes, like we've said, we put stress on ourselves and we don't need to. We do. Um, we really do. <laughs> And so all I'm doing is I'm just doing the you and the me, and I'm just randomly, you know, creating the background. Now, I chose pumice stone because it's got a, more of a grey colour to it, but if yeah. you use something like a walnut stain or a picket fence, would be white, mm -hmm. you get a totally contrast look. I'm just going to add a, a you there. I don't know why. I just fancy adding a you there. <laughs> I love how you're kind of deciding as you go. I do. But don't do that when you do your prep sort of thing yeah you, you have an idea and then suddenly something else comes in your head and you think why not i might as well try that i'm going to use the and now and i'm just i'm using a oh, uh, pick raspberry i love that um, and so we've got the you and me but it's not meant to be perfect because yeah. the background paper has got that beautiful vintage vibe about it yeah this one's the I subtle think, one isn't it yeah so now it, it takes a little bit of the pressure away so i'm just gonna get i'm not gonna waste any of the ink on there also it saves me cleaning my stamp if i'm 100 percent honest <laughs> um, so that is what i'm going to do with the backing and i'm just going to it's going to be you know literally as simple as that so if i move those stamps out of the way i really like put, that in the different colors yeah but what i wanted to do next was look i'm really good i know i haven't got your storage folder but i'll keep everything together so i've got the embossing folder that's got all the um the stamped images on and Beautiful. i love this so what i've did was um is i then put it in the embossing shoulder that like, folder and i ran it through my machine if i did this now my machine would be here and you wouldn't be able to see what i'm doing fair enough um so i have gone ahead and done done that so this is what it looks like Oh. when it's gone through. So I've still got some of the subtle wording, like the you and the me, yeah. but I've now got the raised texture. Now, on the lower part here, what I did do was I then took a sanding block, and I just wanted just to knock it back that little bit further, yeah. but it shows you how much depth and detail is in that embossing folder. This is what textures yeah. is all about, isn't it? It's building those layers and adding texture. Yeah. Um, so you wanted to people to realize that um i mean obviously if i sit here and you know dig for gold i'm going to go through the paper eventually yeah eventually but how good the paper is as well so and Love that's that. what i just wanted to do the, the background so the, the you and me is very very subtle when you tip your card one way you'll see the you and me when you look at it another way you won't see it at all I just wanted it to be really, really subtle. I love that. I just think that's that's so clever. I mean, even just the layering of the and, the ampersand over the you and me in a different colour looks really clever, but then adding all that other texture on top. We could have changed that. I mean, I could have um, gone for a brighter colour for the you and me and made the ampersand slightly darker and it would have reacted, you know, changed the vibe again. Yeah. Um, so like, for instance, if I'd done that on oranges and pinks, you've got a totally look different looking card for the way I've gone. I've gone vintage -y. Of course. So what I've done is, um, after doing that, I've just literally added some 3D foam. Um, 
I just thought I'd add this bit on so you don't have to watch me add 3D foam on sort of thing. This is my worst nightmare, you know, red liner tape and 3D foam when you're doing a demo. <laughs> well, like me trying to get the backing off of the hot air balloon a little while ago, it just oh, never works God. when you want it to. No, you it always when you're crafting at home it's just like oh no easy baby well you don't think because you usually i don't know you're watching something chatting to someone you know you're you don't realize how long it can take sometimes to get backing paper off no no um, and it's just awful isn't it sort of thing right so i'm just gonna put i just put some glue on it a little bit just to give me a little bit of wiggle room mm -hmm. so that actually is now my card front fantastic um, and I actually think, you know the postcard set that you're giving away free, if you just stamp that postcard with a sentiment and even just a wrap around ribbon, that's just a simple card done straight away. Or the hearts that you've brought out before. Oh, the reflections hearts. Yeah. Yes. If you, you could have done the background and cut this out with the hearts mm. and then suddenly you're bringing the two together so it layers again. Well, I'm going off on a different tangent now. It's made no, me think of other things. No, I love how you <laughs> think about mixing the collections because obviously when we do a launch, we focus on that one collection. But I know that you're also, with this one, going to bring in another collection as well that you've already told me yeah. about. <laughs> right, now I've die cut this. I wanted to show it in different ways. I've die cut this from Mary Card because obviously <sighs> we're doing ours from, you know, craft, black, creams and other things. But I just wanted to show how stunning the globe looked coloured from Mary Card. Um, and then suddenly the background takes on a different vibe again. Yeah, it now, does. Now, if that's too shiny for you, take the sanding block that you've used before and just knock back a little bit of the um, a little bit of the gloss. Yeah, it kind of dulls um, it, doesn't it? Yeah, dulls it a little bit. Or um, put the waxes on. Like you've used, if you put a gold wax on top of this, it would change the gold colour, mm. which I know sounds a little bit of a weird thing to say, but no, it does. There's it lots does. of different colour golds. Like there's lots of different colour whites and blacks. So that would that could change it again. Now I've taken your backing paper, and what I did was with the globe is I actually cut away the actual. Um, but I wanted to keep it in place to show it. Yeah. Um, that part of the circle. Great. And I then took where you had the darker clouds and cut away the earth part. Ah, I like that. So, so now when you layer it up like that, I can use if I just layered it like that, it looks like I've got the sea and I've got the land. Yeah. Um, straight away using the papers. Perfect. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm all for um, easy crafting at <laughs> different times. You know, you just go like that. So you I've know. just got some little 3D foam on here, and now you're not going to pull away from me, are you? Yes, you are. Good. Yeah. Don't forget, everybody, <laughs> we are giving away three bundles of vintage travel. Um, there's about, I think there's four or five items in each bundle. It's huge. It's in total worth over £158 the three winners will be announced at the end now lou's still got to finish this demonstration and i've still got a demonstration which is actually a much longer one <laughs> to do so we're going to be here for a little while yet we're not going to be finishing at half past if you do need to shoot off if your lunch hour is finishing or if you usually can only allocate an hour to watch us on a friday please do catch up later you can catch up on youtube or you can catch up on facebook sorry lou right, so, no you go for it um so i cut that away from the backing paper but I mean, so I've got that there. Now, depending on how much patience you've got, all these little bits I've got here, if I snip them out, I can suddenly now bring them in and paper piece in so I can do a little bit of colour matching. You could, um, but you'd need to have a lot of patience for that. <laughs> I know, you know sometimes when life's too short, some things. What I do want to do is I just want to do, and I'm not going to do um, too much distressing, but I just want to distress and slightly crease the blue. Because obviously the background, I just want to make it look a little bit, the globe look like you've travelled it and well travelled. Mm -hmm. So we've had a few comments to us over overrunning. Um, uh, <laughs> Carla's said, she's here all day. I love that. Um, Maria Huss, she's just recovering from eye surgery, but really want this collection and she wants to craft now. It's so inspiring. Thank you so much, Maria Husk. I hope you're soon feeling very, very better. Um, Definitely. And Cheryl Thomas says, carry on, Lou. <laughs> I don't know which one she means. <laughs> right, so what I've done is I have die cut um, the I suppose, longitude and latitude, for want of a better yeah. expression. Um, and I've cut one from cream and I've done from the gold. And I just want to create a, a very, very subtle drop shadow. Yeah. Um, 
it's a way of also doing the drop shadow is a way of adding um, depth without a 3D foam pad. Mm, yeah, because they can be fiddly if you've not got large areas, can't they? Yeah. yeah. So I just want to add, so that's now going to sit, you know, on top of there. And I was watching you the other day sort of been going, no, North Pole, South Pole. And I was really tempted to, um, to stamp out an N and an S and put them either side of the compass to yes. remind myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to sit there. And as you can see, the, the drop shadow is really, really, really subtle. Mm -hmm. so we've got and I've done exactly the same to go with the map. So I can just add a slight drop shadow or imagine it as, um, you know, if you've got a light on and yeah. you're just showing the top of the globe. If oh, you... yes. Do, do you know what I mean? If you had a light shining on and you were highlighting a certain area. Yeah, it would be like uh, little highlights, wouldn't it? It would. And that's um, when you could then, if you've got any drops or any sequins or things like that, so you could actually then put a little drop where you visited on the globe or where that person has. Absolutely. Sorry, okay. I was engrossed in comments. I am listening no, to you, good. I promise. Uh, lots no, of comments of people saying carry on. They're really enjoying the demonstrations. Um, and apologies to those who do have to go back. Now it's their lunch hour over or whatever it may be, but all catch up don't worry and if you have commented your name is in um for winning i do make a note of all the names the winners by the way if if you have to go off for any reason um and you've won after a little while we do i do try and get hold of you so you know don't panic we sort of try and see if we can find you we don't sort of leave it as oh well it's an unclaimed prize so don't panic if you do need to go um but you're hoping to win we'll get hold of you so that's the globe layered up um, and, it, I, and it just looks so different and it's got that vintage vibe but that was using the papers and a little bit of cream. Lo I love, I absolutely love that and for it's, you to use Miracard, for it to inspire you to use Miracard, I feel I very honoured Lou. <laughs> I know, I'm not a Miracard, I don't normally use Miracard and if I do it's without coming. <laughs> now I couldn't resist, I thought these florals from your previous collection were just perfect. Yes, so this is floral brand. script. These, this is actually, yeah. um, this is the design of my tattoo. Yeah. So that's one of these florals. Yeah, so I've got these florals on my shoulder that I hand drew a few years ago. So I've made them into the stamp set. Random little bit of information for you. No, cool. And that's where the pink came in because yeah. um, I colored the flowers the pink. So I wanted things to match up. Now, this is like a you and me card, but you could change, I could do the flowers blues, I could change them, I could make them more vintage, um, and you could make it um, a masculine, you know, masculine anniversary card. Yeah. Because um, you've got the alphabet, you could have even, I could even stamp out husband, mm -hmm. wife, you know, someone, and and because the alphabet is designed to go with the collection, it would be perfect. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was, it seems a shame to cover up the Easter Island faces there, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, when you go, it does seem a shame to do it. So <laughs> I wanted to add some of the flowers, and I haven't done too many of them. And what I want to do is, I just want to have them in and around the globe. Mm -hmm. and I love that look. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, it's something, I, I just thought they went perfectly with it. You, know, you are very good, Lee. <laughs> these were a set bought for me um my son spotted them and they said to me you know this is this is just you mum and then the next thing i know they bought them for me that's so nice i'm glad they, they did because then i get to see your inspiration with them i love seeing what other people have done with the collection so um you can share things like that either tag craft stash tag myself um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as is Craft Stash and then there's also Craft World where we all share lots of inspiration and we have brand pages and such so um, there's lots of places we can be sharing inspiration isn't there and lots to find it as well. Right so I've got and I'm going to layer that there so it looks like the globe is sitting amongst the flowers now I would add a few more 3D foam pads but I'm not going to wrestle with them much longer. I think that looks uh, beautiful as it is. Well, now what I did want to do is, yeah, I've tidied up so well, you can't find it. Too well. <laughs> <laughs> so, he was looking for, there they are, cute. I want to do um, a little bit of the postcard again. Mm -hmm. And what I want to try and do with it is, I'm trying to 
I'm really, really been good here. I'm here for my stamp blocks. So bear with me. I've uh, got the alphabet on the one I want to use. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking at my edges. Right, so what I want to do is... <laughs> Now I've got a little bit of the blues and I've got a little bit of the pinks. So I just actually want to do that again with some of the distressed colours. And I want to do the postcard. Um, and I want to have it. Now I'm not going again for um, a perfect image. No, it's a bit of distressing there. <laughs> distressy look, sort of thing. That sounds weird, isn't it? A bit of a distressy look. I'm um, just going to read some comments out while you're inking up. Um, Jackie Gray has said half hour lunch break just isn't long enough for her to see all the wonderful demos and fabulous inspiration but she will catch up later on what she's missed fabulous show as always thanks lou and lou have a lovely crafty weekend thank you so much for joining us jackie hope you can you get chance to catch up soon it's a nice weekend thing isn't it to sit with a cup of tea and relax and catch up with what you've missed in the week oh just slightly now uh, uh, how different does that postcard look just by stamping it with the pinks and the blues compared to doing it as a vintage but what, all I want to do, lovely. Isn't it? It's totally, you know, different. But all I actually want to do is, I want to cut some of this away. Oh. And I'm going to grab my sanding block, which so, my husband didn't realise. Uh, where shed. is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, so Joan has said. So not only does she need the hot air balloon set <laughs> and the paper pack. Now she needs this globe set because she already has the floral set. Oh yeah, the, but I just thought that I just thought it was perfect. I just went there, and what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of the wording in amongst the flowers, so it's Ooh. like telling story. I love that. It looks like a little book page because it is a handwritten yeah. font, isn't it? Yeah. And I just thought it looks as if you're telling. I don't know. I like to play, make stories, you know, about my compositions and such like that. But um, I was, this design in my head was I was trying to think that this would equally be a card to send to someone as an anniversary or anything like that. But also, I wanted it to be if you were making an album cover, so oh, like nice. an album for a book. Yeah, um, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to cut out these two bits here. And these are the two like little stamps. Now, um, I'm just going to tuck those in and amongst the actual flowers as well. So they're going to sit in amongst there. And I've lost the other one. Oh, it's stuck to my finger. And so, <laughs> I've lost that one, but it's stuck there. But I just wanted to, to tie in some of the little postcards. Um, we send flowers and we send gift cards. So I, in my head as well, it was like I'm doing a gift card. Mm. It's so pretty and such a different take on the vintage travel. Sort of all the examples I've used without any flowers and things. Um, so Linda Newman says, really lovely and inspiring. Such a beautiful card. Um, Roxy Lee, absolutely loving this collection. So many different ways to use it. Miriam Scott has said, beautiful card. Roxy Lee has said, such a pretty card. And it goes on. <laughs> yeah. right, and the last thing I'm going to do very, 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 very quickly is I've taken from the sentiment stamp sort of thing, you are my world. Uh, I, I, I do like that. I, I say that to my family, all of them. But you are my world. <laughs> yeah, they? they are. But I think they are mine. It depends on sort of thing what type of call it was when they were at uni. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Mum, can I have... <laughs> Oh, that, that, that call was always happened was yeah. sort of thing. And then suddenly mum, I've run out of food. And then suddenly their food list would have, you know, salmon pieces, steak. Nice. You know, and you just sit there and go, hmm. I know who to call when I need shopping doing now. <laughs> you know, you just go, if you were buying for yourself, would you do that? So nope. that's the sentiment there. And it's just, I thought it's just a nice, we could stamped up husband you know we've got the alphabet there wife you know yeah I, one of the benefits of an alphabet as well is it's it's things like daughter-in-law son-in-law um you yeah. know things like that it, it gives you that opportunity to do that so i've had right. over the years i've had a lot of trouble getting um stepdad cards for my children to give to my husband um yes. but now i can write it so we've got that there, you are my world. And 
what I'm going to do is just tie in with just a little bit of the pink. I do like that diagonal pink. angle that you've done. It's a little bit different. Um, do you know, I, I, I got into the habit of doing it because I went through a stage of rushing stamping sentiments right. and they were never straight. <laughs> and so if you put an angle on it, people don't notice that the rest of it isn't straight. I'm always doing that. So that's where I usually take the edge of my scissors to it. I would, I mean, look, um, so I've got it here, so like, you are my world, it's going to sit, so look, we'll put it there, you are my world. I love that, and do you know what, you can barely see that mirror now, really, it's not oh. as in your face as... No, it's not as in your face, but but you could now, if you've got little stamp um, heart punches, you could add little tiny hearts all yeah. over it, but I just thought it was different, and I just loved the sentiment. And the embossing folder, I just thought when everything went together beautifully. I adore that. But take the You Are My World away and you were making a scrapbook album. That could be a front cover for a scrapbook album. That would be gorgeous. You could just put a photo on there and that would be a scrapbook page. It's just stunning. Yeah. So pretty. So that, that was just something a little bit different. Thank you so, so much. Um, no, I think no. from yourself, that's probably all we're going to have time for today. I've got another demonstration, but by all means, please hang around and join us. You can... I don't know if anyone can hear you, but if you say anything, I'll repeat it whilst I'm demonstrating. <laughs> okay, cool. But we'll come back and say goodbye to you uh, at the end, if that's all right. That's cool. That's brilliant. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks, Lou. Uh, I'm going to come straight to my desk, everybody, because um, I don't want to waste any more time because I want to get as many demonstrations in as possible. Um, this is my longer demo. So I'm going to be bringing in some products that we've not yet seen. Um, that is, the first of all, the world map embossing folder now I've already embossed this I'm going to be bringing in that camera as well and showing you two different designs of the camera now what I want to do on the world map is do a little bit of distressing in fact this is the effect that I'm going to hopefully be getting from this brown now to get this because this is already done and dried what I'm going to do is just show you a small patch on here rather than doing the entire sheet and I'm going to be using the Cosmic Shimmer Andy Skinner Resist paste for this you can get a similar effect with something like uh, petroleum jelly but I would definitely recommend this this is thicker it's not as greasy uh, so if it's in your crafting budget it is a must I believe we've got it on craft stash if not it'll be back in stock soon um, so I'm just going to put it on I'm, I'm gonna do it with a brayer because this way I'm just picking out the raised areas mostly of this design so hopefully you can just about see in the folder that embossing in there I've kept this in the folder and this way as I'm brayering over if I'm pressing hard which sometimes you need to um, I'm not going to be squashing that embossing it's going to remain raised so just making sure that's sat where it should be uh, I'm just going to do a small area so I'll just do this end here just so I can show you the effect that I'm getting so just going over there can you see that's lightened well, it's actually darkened as such. It's lightened in some in some lights and darkened the raised areas and a few other small areas. So once I've gone over the entire image, I pick up with my finger a bit more and just brush it along the edge there of the excess on that mat. I'm using the ink blending mat. This is a craft stash essential ink blending mat. Um, and it is an essential, I use it all the time as you'll see and there's an amazing bundle on offer at the moment on um, some blending essentials so I think it is the mat, um, the blending tools and the spritzes, something like that and it's only 12 99 so go and check that out that is actually in one of the banners on today's email if you've uh, missed the emails and it's at the top of the uh, craft stash homepage as well. You can click on there and find that bundle. Twelve ninety nine for all your ink blending essentials. So it's a wipe clean mat that I'm using there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just pop with this down on my desk, just so you can see. You get two of these and they're clear like so. So I love that because you can still use your grid underneath if you need to whilst you're doing your messy projects. So I've just got here, this is just white acrylic paint. You can use things like distress paint as well. Anything that's water-based really. Um, if it's an oil-based paint, it will be a little bit too tough to do the next stage with. So I'm just going to very quickly brush this over a small area. Now those of you who have crafted with me live before, you'll be pleased to know I've got a quieter heat gun now. So I'll be using that. 
and just brush this over right so I'm not going to do all of this like I say I'm just going to do um, a small area so you can see how I got the effect I'll pop my paintbrush aside and I'm just going to heat dry this off now hopefully you can all still hear me while I'm doing this so because this is acrylic paint and it's just a water-based paint it does dry ever so quickly so I can see that already it just goes matte usually or more matte once it's dried and you do need this to be really quite dry for this technique here because otherwise you're going to be lifting off the wet paint and that's not what we want we want to be able to just lift off the paint where we want it to come away you don't have to use white of course you can use any color cardstock and any color acrylic paint over the top have a play with the different combinations I think that is pretty much dry already most for the most part so what I'm going to do now is take a piece of this is just kitchen towel that's all and I'm going to rub this away so you can see there where I've got had that resist paste where I brayed that over the top I'm now rubbing away at the raised areas of the embossed design so just go in all directions and then of course I put some over the edge so there we go I'm just going to brush away at the edge as well and once you've gone over the whole image you've got something like that now what I've also done is I've used my blending sponges um, these are the round ones you get nine of them in that bundle that I was talking about for 12 99 um, I've blended some distress ink around the edge and I've also stamped you are my world lots of different times much like Lou was doing earlier and um, when she was just doing with the me and you just going around the background randomly not all perfect stamping either some are second and third impressions there so I've got my background for my card so now I just need to very quickly tidy this up and this is what I love about these mats is they are white clean because I need to do other effects other colors on them so give that a wipe with my piece I, everybody knows I don't love I don't like messy crafting too much I like to keep things nice and clean so this mat is perfect because look underneath my, my pink mat is nice and clean now what I'm going to do now I've got my background that is going to be going on to a card base in a little while so I'll pop that to the side because I want to work with the cameras so I've got cameras ready cut out now the cameras come in lots and lots of different pieces and you can build any number of different shapes and themed cameras with this it doesn't have to be just one vintage one um, so I'm going to do a couple of different options here and I'm also bringing in the grey board as well just to show you how we can use those grey board pieces to add a little bit of oomph to a design now I'm going to layer this up what I've done with this middle panel which has come out from this rectangle here is I've taken it to my scoreboard I'm hoping you can see that you'll see it more in a little while I've just scored lots of lines down it and that's given me some texture because I think I've seen that sort of co almost corrugated design on a camera before and I'm covering up the aperture because I don't want the aperture in there so you've got the option of having the aperture in your finished camera or you can fill it back in by using one of the panels there's lots and lots of panels here uh, so I'm just going to go around the edge with this one too I want lots and lots of texture on this but much like that hot air balloon that I did in the black you're not going to see it until I start adding those finishing touches but we can now play with the different order and the different way things are put on here so next I'm going to put a grey board uh, frame and this one matches the die cuts like I said earlier all of these perfectly match the dies so whether it's the hot air balloon the globe or the camera everything matches beautifully and I'm leaving that as raw chipboard as well I'm not worrying about um, making coloring that in black because I think it won't hurt to have a little bit of extra color in there so I'm just popping this over the top as well so this has the aperture in it also has a bit of glue on there um, and it's got a little bit of embossing on there too and that's going to sit just over the top of that grey board and then we've got a frame to come over the top as well so because we've got that aperture there we it now looks as if we've got our gap our lens as such in there so we've got a little bit of depth I think quite a lot of glue is coming out there each time which isn't too much of an issue because it all dries clear I'm, I use cosmic shimmer so it will dry clear now again I'm going to be using 
a grey board piece. I just need to make sure I put it the right way round. And on this, so this is one of those things that goes over the lens and you twist to focus. And I've added score lines in there as well. Now the score lines are important because when I come to the next stage, you'll be able to see why I've put the score lines in. So that grey board's going on there. And then glue, just wet glue all over the top to put my die cut piece see how well that matches up okay so that's all black now you can just about see the dimension in it but we're going to bring in some gilding polish again I've got my cosmic shimmer so this one is the silver I used the gold earlier so just got it under my finger now which is a pet hate of mine um, it does come with a sponge applicator in the top if you want to use that way I'm going to do it with my finger because I want to put it in a few specific places now ideally wait here for your uh, glue to dry before you do this but obviously we want to get things get the ball rolling with this so I'm just going to brush over all of those edges all of that as you can see the corrugated bit there as well and really highlight lots and lots of texture in this so this is making it look a little bit like a camera maybe from the 60s 70s 80s so that sort of time years and years gray board because i've just moved that about i'm going to add some glue, hot glue just to hold that in place a bit better there we go okay also with my hot glue what i've got and this is something that the uh, it just came out, I don't know, it was an old piece of jewellery, like, fa not, uh, not fashion, what's it called? The, is it fashion jewellery? Where you just, you just have it for costume jewellery, that's the word I'm looking for. Costume jewellery. So this is something, I think my daughter actually had, it came free when she bought a, an item of clothing. Um, so just a silver chain, you can probably get a silver chain like this in haberdasheries even. Maybe where the ribbons are, you just buy it, I think I've seen that you can buy it by the yard or the metre so just hot gluing that to there so there's one of my cameras now i'm going to do two cameras show you two different ways so that looks really cool and you can of course go in and add more detail if you want to pick more areas out i've got a few glue strings there so just waiting for that to dry completely so i'll pop that to the side now we're going to get really messy okay um, and we're going to color this and i want to color it in a similar way to this to make it look really really old and I'm going to do that with my textures inks if you've not seen these before I love them um, obviously because I we worked on all the colors and everything and designing them um, but what I'm going to do is first of all black and brown and I'm going to put onto my blending mat one black and then a couple of browns just drops tiny little drops this is watercolor ink um, you don't need much of it at all, okay? And I've got one of the Craft Stash spritz bottles. Can you see the gilding polish on my finger there? I'm going to have to... It is water-based. It does wash off. I just only have a, a, a non-wet thing, a kit, bit of kitchen towel here to hand. <laughs> so I've got a silver tip finger. And I'm just going to dip. So this is a camera I've put together. It's all cream card, so ivory card stock. I've layered it up. There's no gray board in there, so it's quite flat. I think it was two layers of card stock for each piece. And I'm just going to press this into that ink. And I'm gonna spritz a little bit more, so I want a bit more water. And sort of, sort of smooch as such. Let's add a little bit more ink because it's, I soaked it up with the first one. So two drops of the brown and then one of the black. And that just darkens it, gives you lots of different tones. And you'll find in, particularly in the brown as well, there's a lot of different colors. There's reds, there's even some greens as well, which I love. So because we've got on this, we've got raised areas, it's obviously a little bit harder to get every area covered up. So give it some water, let it all spread around and just pick everything up. And it's called smooching. If anyone doesn't mind that word, it's smooching. There, so started, just started the first stage of really um, distressing that and making it look aged. So I'm just going to cut, dry this off a little bit, just a little bit. 
I don't mind that there's some of the cream colour still coming through and hopefully you can see there some of those colours we've got to, to the edge of the brown we've got a beautiful blue coming through but I am going to add let me just wipe this so wipe off the brown look at this it's all perfectly clean underneath still I'm going to add a blue so I think two drops of that and I'm going to add a green now blue and green together make aqua and I adore aqua colors it's like my favorite I'm going to add some more water to these and I'm going to do exactly the same again lots more water to these though and I'm going to smooch again and this is going to reactivate the brown and the black but add in those other colors so what I'm trying to do now is just fill in there we go fill in some of the other colors where where the um, cream was you look the back got the back as well you won't keep your hands clean doing this I think there is no possible way of keeping hands nice and clean let's dry this off again once more and as it dries it will lighten up a little bit there we go so I'm holding it it's ideal if you can pop it onto a heat resistant surface to dry it off I've got a lot of liquid in here it shouldn't take too long I only want the surface dried off because there's one more stage that I need to do with this that makes it look really quite old and it's my favorite bit as well so dry that and don't forget to dry the reverse as well there we go I think that's almost done I'm just gonna wipe this again with my left hand while I keep my right hand still just drying the excess off of that camera right now last stage or last couple of stages for this coming back to that gold polish I'm going to pick out the detail again much like we did with the uh, silver one just with my finger picking out those top areas give it a bit of a metallic look like so there we go okay and then this is the bit that I love so coming back to my watercolor inks I'm going to bring in the orange now orange is not a favorite color of mine I rarely use it okay but look what happens when you use it with metallic effects now I've got one more thing to do there it is I just need to spritz this with a bit of water and just lift off some excess so that will give a few little water droplets and also dampen that I've got a little paintbrush here and I'm going to drip it directly into my um, non-diluted orange watercolor and I'm just going to brush the orange in a few areas underneath some of these raised areas okay and down the sides and what this is going to do is make it look as if they've been sitting for a long time and corroded and if it's metal gone a little bit rusty as well okay we can do it around the edge there we can even do it at the top here too and then I'll just give that a very slight spritz just to allow that to all bleed into each other now that looks really old and vintage when it's dried and it's lightened up like I say it will look like this so there's an example of the raised areas it's all dry so this one's crispy this one's still a bit floppy um, the raised areas with that orange the orange really pops it really uh, brightens up when it's dry and it looks like it's rusted metal so that's how I've really made that look very very vintage so that's just a couple of ways of doing the cameras let me pop this to the side you can see here on this example I've used lots of if there's that silver wax on there I've used a lot more silver gilding wax on that one to what I did on this one but you can see the difference and all of these different if we look at all of these and then even this one as well they're all different shapes that the elements have been put on in different ways so you get really different looks from them so let's just finish this card off that I started here so I've got the backgrounds here that I just need to glue down I think I'm just going to pop that down with a wet glue because we've got dimension in the camera with the grey board underneath right we'll have some winners in a moment everybody as well 
so I can announce those. Lou is just waiting to say a goodbye in the background. She's probably busy working, to be honest. She's probably crafting away. <laughs> she says yes. Never one to sit still for a few minutes. Got to be doing something. <laughs> uh, let me just check we've got winners' names before I say we have. Uh, yes, I believe so. They're just coming through. Fantastic. There we go. Oh, oh, we got three. I'm going to announce them in a moment. Right. So let's pop these cameras on. So this one I'm going to have in the corner. Can you see now why I chose that teal colour to match nicely with that? So the teal in there. Now this is still a bit damp and I would like to allow this to dry but uh, we're obviously quite short on time now so I'm going to pop that on anyway and if I need to I'll re-stick that in a little while and then glue stick come on work there we go hot glue on this I'm going to allow that chain I think to just fall quite free and to move around and then just to finish this off what I've also got here is never stop exploring. I've stamped that sentiment. Now I love that. I love anything that looks like that sort of label maker type. And I'm gonna pop that across the top there. Now there's lots more that I could do with that. Hopefully you can see that sort of rust effect appearing on that older camera. I've got the slightly more modern one here with the chain and the world in the background. So there's just a couple of ways you can be using those cameras.